Hi everybody, this is Claudia Gray, the author of Defy the Stars. In Defy the Stars, one of the main characters is Abel, a mech who has been programmed to simulate the complexity and depth of human thoughts and emotions. This is a fascinating concept to me, hopefully to you too, and of course it has been to a lot of people for a long time, which is why there are a lot of movies that deal with this. But anyway, these are my top five. Number one, going in the order of when I first saw them, is War Games. That is a movie from the 1980s starring Matthew Broderick and Ali Sheedy. And it's now a little bit hilarious because the super high-tech computer at the heart of all of it is something that wouldn't even be able to run Grand Theft Auto now. So, uh, however, it could run nuclear weapons, which is pretty scary, right? Right. Anyway, uh, he thinks that he has hacked into a video game company and is getting to play their new uh, prototypes, but what he's actually done is hacked into the Department of Defense, and he may have just started World War III. Uh, the thing that makes this really interesting is it's not just a cold computer program in there. The computer is called Joshua, and it actually does have the human capacity to learn. And when you learn why that computer is called Joshua and how you're able to connect to it, it ends up becoming uh, unexpectedly very moving. Uh, it's also one of the very few movies featuring teenagers that act like actual teenagers. When's the last time you saw that? Probably been a while. Next up is 2001 A Space Odyssey. Uh, it is not for nothing that the computer HAL is often cited as one of the great villains of cinema. Even though this is a computer in a wall, it doesn't even have a body. However, uh, HAL isn't even evil. HAL is only doing what he's been programmed to do, and that makes it so much scarier. But number three, Blade Runner. Uh, of course, Blade Runner is the one that we cited, my agent and I, when we took Defy the Stars out on submission because the replicants of Blade Runner are probably the closest thing to the mechs of uh, Defy the Stars that I've seen personally. They are not quite as advanced as Abel, but more advanced than the other mechs. They're really sort of stuck in the tragic middle where they can have feelings and they can have hopes and they can want things, but they lack the freedom to have their own lives, which is a terrible situation to be in. And it's one that the younger Harrison Ford as Decker has to try to dig into. Next up we have Ex Machina, which I am not going to spoil for you. I wouldn't spoil it for the world. I think it came out two years ago, uh, a few months before uh, The Force Awakens, I believe, because that was the first time I saw Oscar Isaac, and I was like, hello, Oscar Isaac. Weren't we all like that when we saw Oscar Isaac? I think we were. Anyway, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it not only has a lot of interesting things to say about artificial intelligence and the potential for that, but also it has a lot to say about what a patriarchal society expects of women in a very literal and very scary way. So brace yourself for that one, but you definitely want to see Ex Machina. I know that's on Amazon Prime. It's probably on some other viewing platforms as well. And finally, come on, you knew I was going to name a Star Wars movie. And I'm actually going to go with Rogue One, which is not my favorite of the Star Wars movies. But if I'm looking for an artificial intelligence that I felt like was closest to human, I really think uh, K2 in Rogue One is the droid we see who comes across the most like a human being. He is passive aggressive and he's pessimistic and he's very, very funny. And I felt like his role in that was as close as the Star Wars universe has really ever gotten to treating a droid's existence with the same kind of seriousness that it treats human lives or Wookiee lives or um, let's say just uh, sentient being lives because human narrows it down a little bit too much in Star Wars. But anyway, I thought K2 was the one most like a person and I thought that he was also the droid that the story treated the most like a person. And so that's the one that I would pick for this list. So there are tons of other great movies that I could go through here all the way to uh, back in the 50s with the day the earth stood still, but that would take hours and hours. And I really feel like these top five give you some great viewing to dig into maybe after you've read Defy the Stars and you're interested in asking a little bit more about artificial intelligence and what it could mean.